Hi, my name is Mark, one of the pastors at Trillium. Recently, I was listening to Sarah McLaughlin's song, Ordinary Miracles. Perhaps you know it. Such a, such a beautiful song. Its message is so simple. The miracle, the miraculous, is found in all the ordinary things in life around us. From a raindrop falling to a snowflake to a seed germinating. We have a choice we can make in seeing and in recognizing the miraculous that lives within our midst every day. It's almost like we're beginning an invitation. We're, be, we're getting an invitation from Sarah McLaughlin to see differently than we normally do. To be reminded there's another way of knowing things. Ordinary Miracles reminds me of an older song written by Louis Armstrong called What a Wonderful World. It too wants to focus our attention in the natural world and in our relationships with each other in the miraculous, in the miracle. You know, even something simple like saying, how do you do? There's an, a deeper message, a miraculous message of love between people. And, and again, the song invites us to look at life from a different frame. I, I recently had a situation where I was struggling over a problem. And, and then one morning I woke up with a clear understanding of what the problem was and a very specific answer to how to fix the problem. And I was thinking to myself, where does that kind of message come from? I did not figure this out. It was a gift given to me. It was something I discovered. It was something that I found. Like a dark corner of my mind has a light bulb come on and I see the answer there. I, I, I was reading that one commentator was suggesting that artists, creative artists, almost all creative artists are platonic in their understanding which means in very simple terms that art, creative art, painting, writing, music, whatever it might be, this creative art is more an act of discovery, of finding, than it is one of manufacture. For instance, Mozart would wake up often in the morning with a symphony or a movement of a symphony in his mind. It was just there. He'd run to the table, he'd scribe it out. Later, he'd come back and bring his incredible craftsmanship and he'd make it even more beautiful, but the essence of the music was a gift given to him. Where did that gift come from? J.R.R. Tolkien describes the same phenomena in his writing of The Lord of the Rings. Other than a vague sense of the storyline, he, he would stand back and it felt to him like something was writing through him. Someone was writing the story through him and he was an observer just like those of us who have read the book. He was amazed by this. Where did this story come from? What was the gift of the story? It's almost as if there's another world behind this one, a pure, a more beautiful, a more creative world behind this one that wants to break through and touch us. And I think that's what the essence of the miracle is about. When we talk about miracle, we're talking about somehow another world, one behind this one, breaking through and informing the world that we live in. And, and, and I recognize that for many modern people, that's a struggle to, to think that there is another world behind this one. We've been brought up on materialism so deeply that it's really hard sometimes to think that there is a world behind this one wanting to break through. The word miracle comes from an old proto-Indo-European word that meant to smile. A smile, a, a laughter that comes from the amazing, the astonishing. That kind of joy that comes to us, the laughter, the, the smile on our lips that comes to us when we have an unexpected discovery in life. The early church lived in that, that constant presence of the smile, the joy, the laughter, the happiness that comes from an unexpected discovery. Miracle making was an essential part of the life of the early church. And yet when I look around to the modern church today, I see miracles so, so often absent from the life of the community. Where have our miracles gone? How have we lost the frame to recognize them? You know, most religion isn't about miracles. Most religion is actually learning to, to take down the hindrances, the obstacles, the blockages to recognizing love's awareness, which in its essence must be miraculous. For all miracles ultimately are an extension of love. Where love is, there is the miracle. Where there is the miracle, there is love. When we say God loves us, by implication we are saying that God's miracle-making presence has to be in and around us. So I'm thinking to myself, I really want to take down the obstacles to love's so presence in my life. I want to see 
the ordinary miracles the ex and the extraordinary miracles that come to me every day of my life. So I, I'm committing myself today to taking those obstacles down, opening up my heart and mind to receive the blessing of heaven and earth. So that not only will I be enriched and informed by the miracles, the ordinary miracles, and the extraordinary ones, but I will allow myself to be the instrument of bringing that same miraculous presence of love to others.